Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. The pandemic, not the only problem for a local business, a burglar stealing that owner's life savings. The crime caught on camera coming up. And a disease detective planning ahead for the Thanksgiving holiday. What a local epidemiologist is laying out for her celebration and the tips you may want to consider for a safe holiday. But first, phones across Bear County buzzing with an alert tonight after more than 900 coronavirus cases were reported. Metro Health says the majority of those cases came within the past 10 days, but it does show the virus is spreading. Along with mask wearing, health officials are encouraging you to limit outings and avoid social gatherings. The seven day average, which is a more accurate count in our daily changes, has risen throughout the week. And tonight that average has risen to 399. Seven more deaths were also reported today. All were men, which Metro Health has said is less likely to get tested for COVID-19. Meanwhile, over at our hospitals, 444 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized tonight. That includes 65 patients from El Paso. Metro Health also reporting 141 patients in the ICU and 66 on ventilators. Much of the country is now seeing a rise in hospitalizations and it's even led the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to urge people to not invite people into your home for Thanksgiving this year. As the night team Stephen Cavazos tells us, a local epidemiologist who's been tracking this virus throughout the pandemic says it's a time to be thankful, but careful. We just have a lot that we're trying to figure out. Sharice Rohr Allegrini says 2020 has been an intense year for everyone in the healthcare field. Testing negative is a get out of quarantine free card. She's a local epidemiologist and the CEO of the San Antonio AIDS Foundation. She also spends her time tracking the local COVID-19 data, but she's hoping to take a breather on her favorite holiday. It's a meeting of, of coming together, um, of, of people joining from different cultures to celebrate what they have and to share it most importantly. It's been her Thanksgiving tradition to host friends and neighbors from different cultures and walks of life. She even prepares a turkey for each dinner she hosts. But with a rising COVID-19 cases, things will look drastically different this year. It's really hard to be isolated for Thanksgiving. It's just it's so contrary to what the meaning of Thanksgiving is. She'll trade large gatherings for an intimate one with her husband and two kids. We'll find something else to do. That's the four of us. And you know, we're fortunate we have each other. She believes it's a safer alternative as opposed to to mixing households, which she says could be risky. She encourages others to do the same. I want to hug people. I want to give kisses to my relatives, but you know, that's going to have to wait. She says, although it may be an unusual Thanksgiving for families, being physically apart doesn't mean they're not emotionally together. Just have a human connection that doesn't have to be physical. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. City leaders, Metro Health and the CDC are encouraging everyone to postpone travel and stay home. Our KSAT community partners are also encouraging you to celebrate virtually and keep celebrations with only the people you live with. They invite you to use the hashtag Zoom now hug later to encourage social distancing. The CDC says if you do attend a Thanksgiving gathering, have a small outdoor meal, wear a mask, Stay six feet apart, wash your hands often, and limit the number of people in the food prep areas. Other top stories we're following tonight. The driver who hit and killed a 61-year-old man remains on the run. Police say a black Dodge Ram pickup hit Fred Lee Cameron as he was crossing Bandera Road last night. It was past Woodlawn Avenue on the west side of town. Cameron was pronounced dead at the scene. Officers say instead of stopping to help, that driver kept going. If you can help police in this case, give them a call. The Bear County District Attorney's Office says a change is coming to domestic violence cases. More judges will now begin hearing misdemeanor cases of domestic violence, ranging from assault to terrorist threats. Eight judges, instead of just two, will take turns hearing those cases. It's a move Bear County DA Joe Gonzalez says will help victims have their day in court sooner and potentially save lives. The owners of a local CBD shop are devastated after their life savings were ripped away from them earlier this week. A man broke into the backyard botanicals and stole thousands of dollars worth of property. All of it caught on camera. The night team's Jeff Gray with that footage.
It's just one more knife in the wound. Already hit hard by the pandemic, Backyard Botanical CBD shop owners Eric Bills and his wife have done everything to keep their doors open. We went into our savings, our reserves, we emptied our 401s. Bills says they bounced back in October, but after Tuesday night, they are now back to nothing. Take a look at your screen. This man can be seen after hours rummaging through the shop on surveillance video. I mean, my heart just dropped. Bills says the man broke into the store not once, not twice, but three times. Third time that he had came back, he actually triggered the neighbor's alarm when that spooked him. This is my son's laptop for uh, his homeschooling. This is the backpack he took that's got all of our financial documents for the business. That's one of our shelving units that he took out. It's full of product. Bill says he got away with just under $20,000 worth of product, inventory, and electronics. He was a nice guy. He did unplug things instead of ripping the cables out. This is the lock the suspect allegedly broke through to get inside of the shop. Now, since that incident happened, Bill says that they've hired a locksmith to have a boat lock installed on this back door, making it harder to get in. He says if there are two things he strongly dislikes in this world, that's people who lie and steal. This is our lifeblood. This is how we feed our children. Bring the stuff back. Beals is asking anyone with any information to call San Antonio police. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Students at Texas A&M University San Antonio are honoring the 37 transgender lives lost to violence this year. The second annual Transgender Day of Remembrance vigil was held tonight. On display were pictures of those who died, while guest speakers spoke about what everyone can do to make a difference. Organizers say even one senseless transgender death is one too many. That transgender people are people and they deserve life, they deserve um, education, they deserve to live in peace and equality. The university's central academic building dome was also lit up to show solidarity. Well, tonight we are also following the story of ben Detective Benjamin Marconi on KSAT.com. Today marks four years since the San Antonio police officer was killed in the line of duty. The man charged in Marconi's death continues to await trial. You can also check out this backstory on KSAT.com. Our KSAT community partners want to help you get your flu shot this year. Tomorrow is your chance to make it happen. It'll be happening from 8 a.m. to noon over at Texas A&M University, San Antonio. You do need an appointment to receive a flu shot, but there are still spots available. We have a link to register right now on our website at ksatcommunity.com. Still ahead on the night beat, another presidential family member under quarantine and the latest on the race for a vaccine amid this pandemic. And the FBI involved in the investigation into a mall shooting, the latest from the scene in Wisconsin, next on the night. Shoppers were forced to take cover at a Wisconsin mall today. A gunman shot eight people before running from the scene. It happened at the Mayfair Mall outside of Milwaukee. SWAT teams rushed in and police found seven adults and one teenager with injuries. The search for the gunman continues tonight. Witnesses are describing him as a white male in his 20s or 30s. The FBI is joining the investigation, but still no word on a motive for the shooting. President Donald Trump's oldest son in quarantine. A spokesperson says Donald Trump Jr. learned he tested positive at the beginning of the week, but had no symptoms. The 42-year-old is the latest member of the president's family to become infected with the virus. Meanwhile, Pfizer officially requested emergency use authorization from the FDA for its vaccine. The federal agency says a vaccine advisory board will meet to discuss the drug on December the 10th, which Pfizer says is 95% effective. The government has already stockpiled 40 million doses from Pfizer and Moderna. Officials saying they're ready to go within hours of approval. Three, two, one. Well, here at home, a tradition in San Antonio continues just in a little different way. This is now the 34th annual Light the Way at the University of the Incarnate Word. Our own Steve Spreester helped kick off the event. But because of the pan pandemic, this year's celebration centered around a drive through experience, but it was just as special. It brings some joy. It gives us a reason to, you know, find some holiday brightness. And I think 
it's really nice for UIW to, okay. to provide this to families right now. Every year volunteers help change help change the bulbs for a beautiful showcase. One million lights decorate the university campus. And we have a look at some more lights tonight from Sky uh, 12 Ooh. up over SeaWorld. They have their lights on now. So you'll probably be able to go out there and see those this weekend. Very pretty. Meantime, uh, take a look at the weather. It's 70 degrees right now, Katie. Yeah, a warm but comfortable evening. Our dew points are still in the 50s for a lot of us, so that's keeping it from feeling too humid out there. So I hope you're able to enjoy uh, the pretty comfortable weather this evening. Check out high temperatures this afternoon. It was another warm day. Low 80s here in San Antonio, but you've got to keep in mind that our average high this time of year is in the low 70s. We were a solid 10 degrees warmer than that this afternoon, and there won't be a whole lot of change this weekend. Upper 70s, but generally speaking, you can expect afternoon highs near 80 both Saturday and Sunday. Something that's also going to stay pretty persistent through the weekend. Chances of morning fog, a few sprinkles, and then clearing as we get into the afternoon hours. So no big changes coming through over the next couple of days. Reading partly cloudy at the airport, but for now, skies are still mostly clear. Again, we've got a nice spread between our air temperatures and our dew point for the time being. Looking at current visibility, fog is starting to creep in down a little bit closer to the coast from Houston down to Victoria, and we'll see fog become a bit more widespread through early tomorrow morning. So not everyone is going to have zero mile visibility, but generally the trend will be this fog working inland from the Gulf Coast through dawn tomorrow morning and then clearing up as we get toward lunchtime. But keep Keep in mind through nine o'clock tomorrow morning, you could run into some patchy, dense fog. With that fog could be a little bit of mist, some drizzle, and even a sprinkle through about midday. A little bit of clearing in the afternoon will help to push our afternoon high temperatures to near 80 degrees. So humidity will stay on the higher side, especially in the mornings. As we get into early next week, we have two fronts in the forecast. One comes through Sunday night, not going to do a whole lot for us. But that second front coming through Tuesday night into Wednesday, that will drop our humidity in a big way just in time for Thanksgiving next week. So right now, your Thanksgiving Day forecast looks pretty good. We're looking at afternoon temperatures in the low 70s with low humidity and plenty of sunshine. It'll actually be or it looks like the day after Thanksgiving that we see humidity roll back in and that should help aid in hopefully some isolated showers by next Friday. So right now, Turkey Day looking good, guys. Thank you so much, Katie. Some big games on the big board today. I just walked in from the game between Justin and Steele. That game is still going on in Lindhoff Stadium. When we come back, we'll let you know how the Rockets are doing against the Knights tonight in that battle of the unbeatens in their district. And the playoffs continue tonight for 4A to 1A teams when we come back. We're the Still Night Cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. <laughs> It sure is a big game. The big game and a big game coverage. The Battle of the Unbeatens in District 27-6A between the number two ranked Judson Rockets against seventh ranked Steel at Linoff Stadium tonight. 7-3, Judson first quarter. When we pick up the action, the Rockets blast off behind DeAnthony Lewis, who sprints for a 49-yard touchdown, and the Rockets were not done after that. We're now in the second quarter. Michael Burrows, the quarterback, races to the end zone for the 20-yard touchdown before the Knights finally answer with a touchdown of their own tonight. And that comes from quarterback Wyatt Beagle with a one-yard touchdown and right now it's 21 to 10 Judson at the half. No more scoring until late in the third quarter. Steals Wyatt Beagle with a handoff to Michael Boynton and he gets around the corner and into the end zone from 12 yards out. The extra point is no good. Justin still leads 21-16. The Rockets waste no time in responding. Michael Burrows hits Anthony Evans. One play, 76 yard touchdown. Now the Rockets expand their lead at 28 to 16. Let's see if that's gone final. It is not. Still in the fourth quarter of just over three minutes to play. Judson's leading 28-16. Smithson Valley Rangers taking their 5-1 record on a little road trip tonight to face East Central. Already up 7 to nothing over the Hornets. That's when the Hive comes alive. Hornets quarterback Christian Vela with a quick pass to Reginald Stewart for the 12-yard pickup. A little later, the Hornets go to the air again. This time, Vela finds six foot five Aston Anston Bryant Kelly in the back of the end zone to tie the game up at 7 all. And the final from the high, Sisman Valley with the win, 31-7. The Wagner Thunderbirds are at home tonight hosting South Sand, trying to win their way into the playoffs. No score, first quarter. T-Birds ground game goes into full effect. On the option, the pitch goes to Andre Booker, who gets to the outside with some nice blocking downfield for a 30-yard gain. He gets all the way down to the Bobcats' 8-yard line. A few plays later, the handoff goes to L.J. Butler, who goes over the pile for the touchdown, 7-0 Wagner. The final from Rutledge, 49-0 Wagner. Off we go to Gustafson's. 
Stadium, where we find the O'Connor Panthers dance team cheering in the stands. Panthers are down three to nothing when they ride, taking on the Warren Warriors. The Warriors on the Panthers 10 when quarterback Vaughn Martinez stands in the pocket, throws a perfect strike to John Carrasco in the end zone. They would miss the extra point to take a 6-3 lead. A set of the big game covered scoreboard for the first time tonight for that final. Look at that narrow win. Warren with a 27-26 victory. Judson leading steel right now in the fourth, 28-16. Elsewhere is South Sam falling to Wagner. That is in the fourth. Not a final yet, 49-0. Smith Valley over East Central, 31-7. Now let's head over to Hero Stadium, where the Reagan Rattlers are ready to strike against the Roosevelt Rough Riders in a battle between the number two and number three place teams in District 28-6A. No score in the first. The Rattlers waste no time getting on the scoreboard. Quarterback Britton Moore finds Staten Ancrum over the middle. He does the rest. He outruns the Rough Riders defense on his way to a 69-yard touchdown to get the Rattlers the early 7-0 lead. And the final from here is still in the fourth, though. Reagan barely ahead of Roser now, 31-28. Here come the Madison Mavericks ready to take on Brandeis and Ferris Stadium. Remember, this is a district game this year. The Broncos get on the board first. Tyler Lopez gets some great blocks from the offensive line, races down to the 31-yard line for gain of 15 a few plays later. They punch it in. This time it is Josh Schwartz on the inside handoff. He scores easily from 13 yards out. Brandeis led at the time 7-0. The final from Ferris, it is 42-31 Brandeis. The lead cheerleaders getting the crowd going tonight at Comalander. Volunteers taking on Clark in what is a district game this year. First quarter, Cougars up 10-0, looking for more. Luke Childs goes deep. His pass is tipped by a defender, but Kamani Paulino hauls it in as he's going to the ground. Great concentration for the 28-yard catch. Very next play, Nikos Varelis powers his way in for the six-yard score. Cougars go up 17-0, and the final, Clark gets a big win over Lee, 30-6. At Harlandale Memorial Stadium, McCollum Cowboys taking on Kyle Lehman. Third quarter, Cowboys down 13-0. Deficit is growing. And off to Kyrie Payne, He's off to the races down the sideline. He takes it the distance, 61 yard touchdown, but the Lobos on top, 20 to nothing. Let's head back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that has gone final. It has 33 to nothing. Kyle Lehman with the big win is 31 28. Reagan barely leading Roosevelt right now, late in that fourth quarter. Elsewhere tonight, Brandeis over Madison, 42 31. That is a final. Clark beats Lee, still leading in the fourth quarter, though, 30 to 6. Tight game at Alamo State tonight. Bracker is taking on Lanier to battle the unbeaten. Fourth quarter, Eagles up 13. Seven, but the Volks are in the red zone. Savian Perez fights his way across the goal line for the four-yard touchdown. Lanier takes the lead, 14-13 with under two minutes to play. Let's see if that's gone final. Brackenridge comes back with the win, 21-14. Here come the Burbank Bulldogs out of the tunnel for the second half of their game against Sam Houston. Hurricanes down 13-12 in the third quarter, but threatening. Dante Brooks hits Faison Reese over the middle for a gain of about 21 yards down to the nine a few plays later. Brooks lost one up for Bala Ali, who makes the grab in the end zone for the touchdown. Two-point conversion is no good. So the Hurricanes lead 18-13. The final from SAISD Sports Complex. 18-13. That is it. Down in Floresville tonight, the Tigers are so happy to see us. They cannot contain themselves. They are hosting the champion Chargers out of Bernie. Quarterback Carson Kaiser on the hot route to Davis Pike, who slips the first defenders, then pushes away the second, and he is gone. Down the sideline, a 66-yard touchdown. 7-0 Chargers. Back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that game has gone final as has. 56-9. Champion with the big win. Bracket Ridge comes back to defeat Lanier tonight, 21-14 to stay undefeated. It was Sam Houston over Burbank, 18-13. And remember, this game was canceled. In fact, the next two Edison games are canceled against Memorial. Wimberley Cheerley is very happy on the sideline tonight's 4A Division II playoff game. The Texans were up 40-7 over Hondo in the fourth, and they show no signs of slowing down. Matthew Tippy dumps it off to Chris Schatt, and he does the rest. He gets some great blocks. Check out the stiff arm to free him up all the way down for the 55-yard score. That made it 47-7, the final 54-14 Wimberley. Not a lot of mask wearing in the Canyon Lake student section tonight as the Hawks are down 21-17 in the third quarter to Cal Allen Wildcats in a 4 a Division I playoff game. The Hawks defense helping the cause. Jeremy Green comes up with the interception, and check out the big return as he weaves his way into Wildcat territory before he gets pushed out of bounds. That would lead to this. Running back Elijah Johnson going over over the top of the pile for the go-ahead score, 24-21 Canyon Lake. Final from Pleasanton. Canyon Lake falls to Cal Allen, though, 37-31. Second round of the Class 4A playoffs. Bernie taking on Port Lavaca Calhoun. Greyhounds protecting the 27-24 lead late in the fourth quarter. Sand Cramps going for it on fourth down. Tanner Lundy makes a game-saving tackle. Turnover on downs. The Bernie sideline erupts. And let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. You saw how it ended 27-24. Bernie advances in the playoffs. Cal Allen ends Canyon Lake season 37-31. Also in the playoffs tonight. Wimberley advances as well 54-14. Navarro with a big win and advances over Raymond Middle tonight 52-18. We have much more to come including our big game coverage road trip. Playoff games as well. Fan cam and more scores and highlights. But first let's listen to the Roosevelt Rough Riders marching band.
big game coverage road trip as photographer Eddie Latigo headed up to New Braunfels tonight for two regular season games before pulling into the newest high school Davenport for a playoff game. Also, he had to audible for that because he had to go all the way up to Buta Johnson for a game as well after one of those games in New Braunfels got pushed back. With more and all the highlights, let's take it live into our newsroom. And that's where we find our Larry Ramirez. Hello, Greg, and thank you very much. Yeah, tonight's road trip features two regular season games and a playoff contest. We have 6A, 5A, and 2A football. Let's get to those highlights. Seguin, Matadors ripping open their banner and charging the field to face Buta Johnson at Shelton Stadium. Matadors' first possession of the game. Quarterback Micah Rodriguez runs up into the pocket, throws the ball to number five, Alex Concepcion, for a nice gain down inside the Jaguars' 10. Two plays later, Rodriguez running the option, and he pitches the ball to Marquise Washington for a five-yard touchdown. Very nice in the Matadors' or at lead 7 to nothing. Clemens at New Braunfels, District 27-6A in a battle of Buffaloes and Unicorns. Third quarter, Unicorns ball, quarterback Peyton Driggers fakes the handoff, gets a big hole thanks to number 71, James Dawn. And Driggers says, thank you very much. They're not going to get him. Peyton Driggers 50 yards to the house, and this game is tied at 31 in the third quarter. Last stop, Davenport High School for a Class 2A D1 second-round playoff game between Mason and Kennedy. Fourth quarter, Mason punchers ball. Handoff goes to Derek Antiveros, and he powers in for a puncher's touchdown to put Mason up 41 to 18. Let's go to the scoreboard now for those finals. And Seguin goes on to beat Buda Johnson 55-24. Look at that Clemens and New Braunfels, a one-point victory for Clemens. And Mason wins 41-18 over Kennedy. Now, despite the loss, Kennedy is on the rise, advancing to the playoffs and back-to-back -back seasons for the first time since 2010-11. Greg, back to you. That is awesome. Thank you, Larry. Time now for Fan Cam, where our fans help us cover one of the big games in our big game coverage tonight. There you go. Fan Cam makes the trip out to Ferrara Field where the Apaches of Antonian are hosting the Fort Worth All Saints in Taps Division I by district playoff game. No score in the first when Antonian puts together a nice drive. Quarterback Zach Schwalen gets it out to Maddox McDoolin, who takes it down to the 11-yard line for an 8-yard gain. Very next play, they go on the ground. Javante Johnson on the handoff gets around the corner, down the sideline, punches his way across the goal line for the first score of the game when Fan Cam departs. 7-0 Apaches. Let's head to the big game cover scoreboard for the final Time tonight to find out how that turned out. The Fort Worth All Saints in Antonian's season, 47-28. to This game by Harlandale and Dripping Springs. That was called off earlier in the week. Elsewhere tonight, Southwest on the road in Eagle Pass win. They get the win, 21-7. to Southwest Legacy had their game also canceled tonight against Laredo Cigarota. That's coming from Cigarroa, by the way. Medina Valley over Curvo Tybee. That's the final, 28-14. to Alamo Heights down in Lockhart, 36-12. to Fall City advances past Granger in their playoffs, 39-16. to Snook over York. Yorktown in the Yorktown season 52-23. Poe, the Pirates, oh my gosh, this is a major upset because the Pirates were undefeated in the playoffs and they fall tonight. Rogers defeats them 21-20 and Franklin over Natalia 49-20. Two of my favorite mascots were involved in tonight's game. The Mason Punchers and the Port Lavaca Calhoun. Sand crabs. <laughs> How can you not love those names? Great mascot. <laughs> you got it. Thank you, Greg. We'll be right back. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. All right, uh, warm with morning fog and a few sprinkles through the weekend. Weak front comes in Sunday night, doesn't do a whole lot for us, but that second front Tuesday night, that will really drop humidity. It sets us up for a couple of very comfortable and sunny days Wednesday into Thursday. Humidity will rebound toward the end of next week, and hopefully that will aid in some isolated showers. We do need the rain, That'd guys. Great. Thank you, Katie. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning. San Antonio starts tomorrow at 6. Good night.